Dr. Fizz here and we're going to continue our discussion of Euler's relation, the Euler formula, and the Euler identity in particular for the special case where we plug in for the theta pi. And if we do that in the Euler formula, we get e to the i pi, and the cosine of pi is negative 1, the sine of pi is 0, and if we add 1 to both sides of the equation we get this marvelous result called the Euler's identity which has those five numbers we talked about earlier the additive identity, the multiplicative identity, pi, i, and e, and what's even more striking is that each is used once and only once in this formula. Well, mathematicians love this so much that when we did our gingerbread decoration a few years back, they proudly put with icing the Euler identity on the cake along with Einstein's equation. So the mathematics and physics folks in Robinson Hall decorate this nice cake, which became the winner, by the way, in the cake contest that year. Let's look at another way of deriving this formula. I want to uh, look at how to relate these intuitively. Now here is the secret. 1 and 0 is not really a problem. You can play with equations and usually get 1 and 0 to, to show up. The problem is the challenge is getting i pi and e to connect up. But we know from our study of the military group multiplying by i is a left face. And that means that we are turning a quarter of a circle turn so we already got pi in there. That's 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. What about e? Well before we get into e let's look at this multiplying by i Again, if we have 1 and multiply by i, we go 90 degrees. If we multiply by i again, negative 1, 90 degrees. And look at this. If you have negative 1, that's 180 degrees. You take the square root, you go halfway, which is 90 degrees. Does that mean if I go halfway to 90, I got the square root of i? No way. Could that be possible? Well, the square root of i possibly could be this. Let's check it. We have here a 45 degree angle, so we have square root of 2 over 2. This is 1, the unit circle, square root of 2 over 2. With the i, if we square this thing, all right, if we square this thing, look what happens. Looks like it's going to be a big mess, but we get 1 half times 1 plus i squared, and that's 1 plus 2i plus i squared, 1 and the i squared cancels. We have the 2i cancels the 2. We get i. This is amazing. So by simply having the angle, we're taking the square root. In fact, if you want the fourth root of i, the square root of the square root of i, it would be 1 half of 45 degrees. Okay, now we have unlocked the key because now we're talking logarithms because whenever you multiply something, you're adding something else. Multiply by i, add 90, or pi over 2. Multiply by i, pi over 2. Well, if you multiply something like 10 times 100, and you're adding something else like the exponent, like 10 is as logarithm base 10 is 1, logarithm base 10 of 100 is 2. So when you're adding something, you're thinking logarithms. So that's going to be uh, the way that we can see this connection intuitively all three of those are related. Now watch this little cute trick to derive the Euler identity directly. What we're going to do is we're going to f uh, mark off here a tiny little angle. This little angle here has one, almost one, all right, because it's small, it's tiny, it's going to be almost one, and this is going to be the arc length because I'm going to let this angle go smaller and smaller and smaller, so there'll be a, then in the limit this uh, vertical uh, distance will equal the arc length and this horizontal distance will then merge to the one. So we take the uh, epsilon here, which is this arc length, we're going to take pi, 
and divide by n and make n very, very large. So that's a really tiny, tiny piece of pi. So z, which is the number in question, will be 1 and i epsilon because it's going to be such a small angle that we can write it in that fashion. And then what I want to do is multiply this by itself. And every time you multiply, you basically add the angle. See, that's the neat thing. That's where the uh, logarithmic or the exponential you know, part logic comes in. So we're going to do this n times and make this angle pi over n and let n slide to infinity. So that means if we take this number z, which is going to be 1 plus i pi over n. See, I'm putting in for epsilon pi over n. And if I take that to the nth power, let n go to infinity so that this n, this little angle goes smaller and smaller. And I'm getting uh, here many, many, many factors as I multiply these slices around. The answer will be negative 1. And if we do that, look what happens the limit as n goes to the inf to infinity of 1 plus x over n to the n we already know is e to the x from a prior lesson and then we apply that for our specific case we will find that the x here gets replaced by i pi so then we have this relationship which we simply add the one to the other side and we have derived Euler's identity directly using a very, very powerful little trick of the infinitesimal angle, a real tiny, tiny piece of pi, and using the multiplication rule that when you multiply the z, you double the angle.